I've not seen such bravery. When I say life simulation board game, chances are the one you think of is the Game of Life. Originally created in 1860 by Milton Bradley, this light-hearted, mostly luck-based game evolved from its checkerboarded roots and managed to have staying power and stick with us through the years. But the game of life, like many other board games, forces you to rely on other players to enjoy it, and I know what you're probably thinking. Ugh, other people? I avoid other people in my own life, so why can't I avoid them while playing life simulation board games as well? In the year 1990, Sierra Entertainment offered a solution to this problem with Jones in the Fast Lane, a life simulation game for MS-DOS. And before we go any further, we need to take a moment to appreciate these tunes. Man, that's a good tune. The main menu presents us with three options. Watch Demo simply lets a CPU play the game with no added explanations. It's not really a tutorial, which I guess is why they didn't label it as such, but including a tutorial probably wouldn't have been a bad idea. There's Restore Game, which means you don't have to complete a full game in one sitting, and Play Game, which is obviously the button we're looking for. The game supports up to four players, but we will only be using one. There are four characters that we can choose from. I've unofficially named them Super Susan, Dave, Lacey, and Sunglasses McGee, the cool dude whose hobbies include being a cool dude. And he's got sunglasses, which explains his first name. Once we've selected a character, we get to set our goals for the game. There are four areas of life that we can set out to achieve in. Wealth, happiness, education, and briefcase. Though we're able to spread our goals around between the four, I think we're just gonna focus on wealth, because Sunglasses McGee is all about dim bills. We also get an option to play against Jones, who I hear is quite in the fast lane, if you know what I mean. I mean, it's the title of the game. And have I mentioned before that I'm not a huge fan of vague difficulty settings? Choosing play fair, however, results in Jones setting the same goals as we did. It really is going to be a race for the most cash. Gameplay in Jones in the Fast Lane is divided into turns referred to as weeks. Each week you have the freedom to do whatever you'd like, really. We start at the low-cost housing space each day, and there are a handful of different places to visit, or not visit, in whatever order we choose. The bank, Socket City, a pawn shop, wherever this town is, we're really set up here. If we're trying to get the most money, I feel like the employment office is a smart first stop. Oh, check out that classic McGee strut. He walks like he doesn't have a care in the world. He just knows he's gonna land a sweet job and make tons of cash today. Welcome to Agni, where every last job is a blemish on your resume. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is that Paul Blart with a mullet? Well, yes, it is, and that fact is confirmed in Paul's extensive autobiography. We currently don't have any education under our belt, so despite how indisputably cool Sunglasses McGee is, I think it's better to aim low in the job department, at least for the time being. We're gonna apply for a clerk job at Z Mart, which would make us $4 an hour. Congratulations, you got the job. Gee, thanks, Paul. What a good guy. Well, let's stroll on over to Z-Mart and check out our new job. Welcome to Z-Mart, home of low cost, low quality, and cheap help. Z-Mart is a discount store, and it sells a variety of products. We've got a discount refrigerator, a discount microwave, so it makes sense that the face of the company is a discount Bob Saget. But we're not here to buy anything, we're here to work. And since our only goal is to get the most money, I think we should spend most of our turn working. But we should still probably be sure to take a trip to get some food as well. This clock down here lets you know how much of your turn you have left. Every action you take eats up some more of your week. I particularly like the fact that it factors in how long you're walking. So for instance, going from our apartments all the way to the employment office eats up a decent chunk of time, but it costs much less of our turn to go from Z-Mart to Monolith Burger. That means that planning out your turn ahead of time is important, and it adds another layer of strategy to the game. Welcome to Monolith Burger. Our food is untouched by human hands, only by teenagers. 
All right, let's see here. Hamburgers are only $76. What a steal. Free refills if you can finish one cup of our coffee. Looks like we've got just enough time to work a little more over at Z-Mart, and then it's Jones's turn. Despite having a walk cycle that pales in comparison to mine, Jones lands a job that pays $3 more an hour, buys french fries as his only sustenance, and finishes the week with a commanding lead. But there's no need to worry, we can make up ground next week. You went penny for gold this weekend, but all you got was wet. I don't know what we're doing wasting our money going panning for gold. I'm just glad we didn't end up with a leg injury. I fell down and hurt my leg. Man, we really need a higher paying job if we're planning on competing with Jones, but that should be pretty easy. Not enough education. Well, fine then, Paul. I'll go get some education. Maybe if I fast track it, spending my entire turn here, we could sneak into a better job before Jones does. Jones, on the other hand, decided to stick to his previous formula, eating french fries and spending the rest of the week working at the factory. Unfortunately for us, those hamburgers only lasted a week, and since we didn't stop for grub last turn, we lose time on this turn. And not just a little bit of time either, we lost a whole third of the week. Regardless, we're able to finish up trade school, which I'm sure is going to result in a higher paying job and ultimately our decisive victory. Surely we can land a salesperson job at Socket City now, right? Poor work history. Hey, screw you, Paul. I guess we better go work some more and... Oh, we're out of time. And here comes Jones. This guy thinks he's so cool. He's walking in here trying to get a different job without even getting a degree. Good luck. Congratulations. You got the job. Paul! You're a piece of crap and your movie was terrible. If I lose, I'm blaming you. And so the game continues. There's no limit to the amount of weeks or turns that we have. The game goes until one of us achieves our money goal. Though the exact dollar amount, I'm not really sure of. But we haven't seen all that Jones in the Fast Lane has to offer. It is a life simulation game, after all, so it's unsurprising that we have to worry about things like paying rent, for instance. Also, remember that we're only focusing on one of four areas. If we had a more balanced goal set, we'd have to worry about happiness. Things like taking off work and resting at home would be important to our score. We might also have to worry about education, though in order to acquire more money, education is still pretty important to us right now. And don't even get get me started on briefcase. <laughs> As we move up in the world, paying for more college experience, investing in stocks, buying lottery tickets, and getting better paying jobs, we have to do things like purchasing appropriate work attire to match our current step in our career. But despite how increasingly cool Sunglasses McGee becomes, that coolness isn't exactly translating into dollars. I'm working as hard as I can, living in a crap hole apartment, and surviving on french fries alone, and I'm still just barely scraping by. Meanwhile, Jones is freaking killing it. Paul keeps doling out raises to him because apparently he's so great, and this dude is just rolling in cash. Luckily, after securing my business administration degree, I managed to land a high-paying manager position at Black's Market, and it's my time to shine. Look at how cool and confident we are as we strut to the new job, probably singing a little tune like, I'm gonna make all the money now. He's gonna make all the money Wild Willy has lifted another wallet. Zero dollars. Are you kidding me? It's, it's okay. It's okay. We have a high paying job now. We can still win. Okay, well, I don't know how, but this is all Paul's fault. Jones in the Fast Lane is surprisingly pretty great. Not that I expected it to be bad or anything, but I don't think I expected it to be so good. I was clearly outmatched by Jones, probably should have done some reading about the rules beforehand, but I could definitely see myself playing this with other people. Though, to be on the safe side, I will say that playing one round isn't enough time to accurately diagnose any problems, like is this game completely balanced, or are there certain cheap and easy paths to victory? I can't really know that after after just a playthrough or two, all I know is that I had a good time. I think that the humor in the game is well done too, which isn't always easy. It's satirical and cynical, but not overly so. Mmm, that looks almost good enough to eat. 
The one issue, though, if it could be considered an issue, is that there isn't a way to lose. The game will give you a handout if you're out of money and clothes and can't really do anything. This isn't exactly great on the life simulation side of things, it seems to be more of a board game inclusion, keeping players in the game by tossing them a community chest, so to speak. Though I'd wager that if you need one of these handouts, you're probably too far behind for a comeback. If you're looking for a life simulation game, Jones in the Fast Lane might be worth checking out. Just don't expect the depth of some other life simulators. Instead, I think this is more geared towards people looking for a board game game that has a life simulation theme. I hope you enjoyed this little look at Jones in the Fast Lane, but before I go, I want to swing back to the game of life for a quick second. This is the 1991 edition of the game, the version that I grew up with. And I never noticed it before, but these guys are color-coded to match the life colors up here. I don't know why I never noticed it before. I mean, it looks like they're having a good time. It's just kind of weird that they're color-coded. Bunch of losers. Thank you. See you soon.